Hey everyone, I need your attention for one minute. This is not one of those ads. This is something that has changed my entire life. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that this is all about personal development as the foundation for everything good in your life. And this podcast is now sponsored by Growth Day, which is the world's first all-in-one personal development app. I mean, oh my gosh, can you imagine having everything all in one place that you need to create? create the life that you want, now you can. So if you've been struggling with your motivation, your mood, your productivity, or your purpose, you have to check this out. Growth Day helps you consciously change your life and achieve your potential. It has all the self-improvement tools, motivational classes, and life coaching all in one place. So many of us want to improve our lives, but the question is how? Where do we start? What do we use? How do you get unstuck? How do you make self-improvement stick? Well, research shows how. It's when you consistently journal, track your habits, set goals, learn from empowering mentors, and challenge yourself that you'll be happier, healthier, and more successful. But let me ask you something. Where do you actually do all of your personal development work? I have to tell you that over 300,000 people use Growth Day for a reason. It works. It's the world's number one software for self-improvement. Growth Day has an amazing mindset journal that I absolutely love, a habit tracker, and a goal setting system. In fact, I bet if you went to my stories this week, you probably saw me using the journaling app and telling you to do it too, because it's the first time that journaling has ever actually stuck consistently in my life because of this app. And best of all, Growth Day has live inspirational classes every single week from the world's top motivational speakers and life coaches. These are people who have impacted my life in huge ways. These are mentors who I already knew and loved. In fact, this is something that's so huge for me, you guys. I personally teach a class in Growth Day every single month, and it is one of the most fun things that I get to do, and I'd love to see you there. These classes will truly shift your life. There's always something new that you will learn. So join me in 300,000 achievers growing our lives with actual real intention. Visit growthday.com slash Lori for a free trial. Yes, you can try this for free. So go to growthday.com slash Lori and go live your best life. You guys, that's growthday.com forward slash Lori. And I can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. I'm Lori Harder, founder of The Bliss Project, three-time fitness world champion, fitness expert, and cover model turned self-love junkie, lifestyle entrepreneur, and author. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a thought that will help you bust through your fears, connect to your soul, and get focused and clear so you can elevate your life, business, and relationships. We don't wait until we're ready for someone to tell us we're good enough. We take what we want and we anoint ourselves. Get ready to earn, own, and unapologetically rock your happiness every single day. Are you with me? Here we go. Welcome back to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. And you guys, if you are feeling isolated, if you're feeling like you don't have a tribe of women, like-minded people to really help you transcend from where you are right now into the person that you know you are being called to be, or maybe you're getting that soul calling and you're not quite answering it yet and it's turning more into a scream and it's starting to make you feel even more awful than the thought of facing the fear around doing that actual thing. If you're in any of these positions, you have to join me this year at The Bliss Project. It is March 2nd through the 4th in Newport Beach, California, and it is going to be 
a life changing weekend. If you've been wanting to bust through your fears and really meet a like-minded tribe of people, this is exactly where you must be. If you're feeling called to this, I want you to go check it out at theblissproject.info right now. It's also in the show notes. And who is this event for? You guys really want to get clear on if you're feeling called to it, I want to make sure that you know what is going to go on there. So if you have always had a desire to do something big, but you've always been afraid to follow through, if you feel like you don't have the tools or the expertise to take the next step, if you wish you had that tribe of supportive people, if you're ready to take that next step into the next level, but you have no idea what that's even supposed to look like, or if you just want to feel more fully alive each day. And this is absolutely for you if you want a deeper connection and understanding in your relationships, if you want to become more fulfilled in your own job that you have right now and in daily tasks, if you want to know the true desires of your soul. And if you're ready to enjoy the journey just as much as the destination. And truly, if you are feeling called to expand your spiritual connection, we're going to be doing some incredible exercises, meditations. We have some awesome teachers who are going to come in and really give you the space to understand what that feels like for you. Because for everyone, it's so different. But to be able to do it together uh, makes you feel even more connected than you've ever felt before. So if you're interested in meditation, if you want to create a solid foundation for all of your goals and dreams to be built on, or if you just need a mental reset, a confidence booster, and to really own your own personal power, you guys, this is the place that you want to be. So there are still some tickets left, but they sell out fast. You guys in this year will be the best bliss project that we've ever done. We have a really amazing team working on it. And we're adding so many more things than we have ever done in prior years, because I know that when I get the opportunity to put epic women into a room, I want magical things there so that you guys can truly have the tools to create your own amazing transformation and experiences. And you guys, what happens there is nothing short of miraculous. So if you're ready to create your transformation, if you're ready to step in, if you're ready to have your tribe, this is where you want to be. And I hope that you join us and that I get to meet you and hug you and see you there. So theblissproject.info. Welcome back to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. And today I'm so excited to introduce you to Naya Jax. You guys, I got such an exciting opportunity to do a podcast with her. And we actually recorded this in between her filming and doing a bunch of different meetings that she had to be at. So we found a sweet spot where we could record in her schedule. And she was so kind to show up, be so fully present because she's so committed to her message. So Naya Jax is a former plus size model and body builder. She's an advocate for positive body image. She is a featured cast member in the seventh season of E's Total Divas. She supports the military through WWE's annual tribute to the troops. And she also regularly visits children's hospitals around the country. She's also the cousin of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. She's played basketball in college and inside the rings. (laughs) She is known to be not like most girls. She's a force to be reckoned with. And she was named rookie of the year in 2016 and strongest woman of the year in 2017 by pro wrestling illustrated. She made her raw debut in July, 2016, and she signed with WWE in early 2014. So you guys, I love how she is using this platform to empower women and also everything that she went through to get where she's at and fulfill this dream. So I can't wait for you to listen in because I think that it's going to give you so many beautiful ideas of different ways that you can create and use your vision, your dreams, and your platform to help other women. So you guys, let's get started. Naya, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so excited to have you on. I'm, uh, thank you so much for actually having me. I'm really excited about this. Once I heard about your podcast, I was like pumped, very pumped to be a part of it. Ah, okay. So I was just in Naya land. Like I was on your Instagram. I was going through everything online and you are hilarious. First of all, 
<laughs> I was Thank like, you. I was like, I love this woman. She is hilarious. She is right up my alley. Like, okay, I have to ask, what is it? When is your birthday? Uh, May 29th. Okay. I was like, is she a Sagittarius? You're a Taurus, right? Oh, no, I'm a Gemini baby. Okay. Ama- <laughs> amazing. Okay. Even better. <laughs> All right. So if you could give everyone just a little backstory on you, I would love to hear just what you're up to right now and how you got into doing what you do for anyone who's not familiar. Well, I am a WWE superstar, Nia Jax. Um, I am from San Diego, California. There's a little town in, uh, it's called Carlsbad. It's the North part of San Diego. And, um, I grew up there. I've always been pretty athletic my whole life. Obviously, I have family that uh, have been in the WWE. The Rock is my cousin, and I've grown up watching him and fell in love with the business. Um, And that's pretty much what got me to get in there. My aunt was actually the one who uh, pushed and encouraged me to get into it because um, I am a plus size to, to be something different that the company hasn't really, you know, shown. So I got into it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I always love to hear because, you know, this is all about, this podcast is all about either going after your dreams or becoming an entrepreneur or doing anything, no matter how big of a dream it may seem, you know, to other people or impossible to other people. So when you were younger, uh, you know, you got to watch your cousin, but was this something, was this a dream that you always had or was this something that seemed challenging to you or just right off the bat where you're like, yes, this is for me, I'm going for it no matter what? No, definitely not. Um, growing up watching it, uh, it, it, I never saw anybody like me mm-hmm. reflected on the show. So I never really thought I could do it. It was something that I was like, oh, this is awesome. It's, it's you know, me and my brothers watched it. We emulated it. it. We had our favorites, but I didn't really relate to any of the women on the show. So I didn't think it was possible for me at first. I really, um, you know... Growing up, I've always been a big girl. I was the tallest girl since I was 13 in my class. You know, I was always, I never fit into any of the clothes of the stores with my friends. And, you know, I always had to go get, you know, my brother's like hand me down clothes. I always wore baggy like shorts and like t shirts because there's no fashion for girls my size. And, you know, I had bigger, like it's just, I was a big person. I'm a big human being, big, beautiful, whatever. But, um, so, you know, seeing the women in the WWE. E, they were so beautiful, but they just, I, just, I couldn't relate to them. So I didn't think that I would be able to do it. Um, I've always been athletic, so I, I knew that my body could take it. I just didn't think my image would be accepted. Um, so, you know, I kept pushing it off, pushing it off. And then finally, uh, WWE, the, they have, we have this big, huge show it's called WrestleMania. And it's basically our Super Bowl. And WrestleMania 28, my cousin, The Rock, was uh, facing John Cena in the main event. And just uh, being there, I just caught the bug. I, you know, sitting front row and all the energy and just seeing how the fans react and how they just, there's so much passion that they give. And I had to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. So I talked to my aunt about it. And I just said, hey, what do you think about, you know, someone like me trying to wrestle? And she, you know, she was so supportive. She said, of course, oh my gosh, I think it would be great. You know, there's, you're so different. You're, you know, you're a curvier woman, you're athletic. We need to be able to show young girls and women out there that somebody like you can do this. And, um, and so, you know, we, we uh, worked it out to where I could try out. And um, at first I was going to train in a, at a place in Orlando, but then the performance center opened up, which is the WWE's training center Mm -hmm. and they had tryouts. So I went in and tried out, uh, not telling anybody who I was related to, Mm. hoping that, you know, it didn't really affect me. If I, if if nobody knew who I was related to, I can actually, you know, have Mm -hmm. a chance (laughs) without any kind of bias. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I tried out and they instantly like, you know, they loved me and they loved the fact that I was different and it like all, I was so nervous. I walked mm. in the, like opening the door to that performance center and seeing all the gorgeous, I mean, I'm not kidding you. They had like supermodels, you know, fitness girls, mm. like, it's, I mean, insane. And they were all done up to the nines, hair and makeup done. I literally walked in cause I've been an athlete my whole life. I was a basketball player, track, you know, softball, soccer. I never wore makeup and I never wore my hair down whenever I played a sport or when I work out Yeah. and these <laughs> girls had their hair. Yeah. Their hair done, their makeup done. Like, 
I was, I walked in with my hair up, no makeup on, like completely <laughs> yeah. grunged out. Like, you know, seriously just woke up out of bed, like rolling in. And I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm out of my league here. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't, yeah, I was like, I don't know if I, I fit here. Like, I, mm-hmm. one, I'm like the biggest girl. Two, I'm not wearing any makeup. My hair is like, you know, scraly. It's all like curly and like frails everywhere, frizzed out. And I'm like, uh, I was so like nervous and like almost embarrassed that I wasn't dressed up the way they were. I was like, oh God, this is embarrassing. Mm. But, so where did you have yeah. to go mentally? Because uh, so a lot of people, what, you know, what tends to happen is you get in your head and then you're like, oh my God. And it's just over from there. So what were you doing? What were you thinking in order to show up the way you wanted to show up? Um, to the tryout? Yeah. Oh uh, gosh. So the funny thing is that um, I was, so like I said, I was going to train in Orlando at a different, at a different wrestling school. Mm-hmm. And then the tryout for the performance center just happened to be like within with three weeks away from the time that I was talking to my aunt about it. And I was able to get into that tryout. So I literally only had three weeks to train mm. for this. And I just remember my cousin saying like, it's nothing like you've ever done before. He's like, I know you're athletic. He's like, I know you can do a lot of things. He's like, but wrestling is a different beast. He's like, getting into that ring, it's it's just nothing like he's ever done. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'll be fine. So I, but what I, because I'm, you know, I'm very like confident in my athleticism. Just, you know, I've been doing it since I was five years old with my brothers. And I never played sports with boys until I was 13 years old. I mean, with girls until I was 13 years old. My dad always made me play with boys. So I was like, dude, I got this. I'll be fine. So I trained as hard as I could, like day in, day out with my brother. I did two a days. My brother trained me because he was a strength and conditioning coach. I got, you know, I got my lifting up. I got my cardio up. And I was like, okay, I'm ready for this. I'm like totally ready. Obviously not like makeup and hair ready, but (laughs) my body was ready. I was like, I'm ready. I could do this, you know. But I mean, boy, was I slapped with a dose of reality. I mean, it like there's he was right. There's nothing I could never tell anybody what it's like to step up into the ring for the first time. Cause it, it, you just can't tell anybody like your body is sore in so many places you never thought could be sore. Mm-hmm. Like I thought I literally was like, I almost like I asked her the first day. Cause it was a three day tryout. The first day of the tryout, I like went back to my hotel room and I like drew a hot bath and I sat in there and thinking like, what the F did I just get myself into? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, am I going to be able to wake up tomorrow and go the second day? Like, you've got to be kidding me. So I want to talk about that because that's so interesting. Like, you know, sometimes we can finally get to those points where you are pursuing your dream and you're like, whoa, this is a lot of work. I had no idea. Did you have that moment of like, do I really want to do this? And what made you keep going? Well, um, so when like during the tryouts, like it was, it was something where I was like, Oh my gosh, my body, can I handle this? Like I wasn't a spring chicken, you know, I tried out at 29 Mm -hmm. and I, you know, all these girls were 21, 22, 23. And I'm sitting here going like, Oh man, you know, I know I really want this, but am I going to be able to handle this? Mm -hmm. And then not on top, not only on top of that, they're telling you like, look, you're, you won't ever see your family. You're on the road over 300 days a year. You're constantly on the go in a plane, in a car, doing media, you know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's just a go, go, go. And, um, I had to, I had to really think about it. You know, I had to really sit there and think like, Oh my gosh, you know, cause I'm so family oriented. Like my family drives me, like Mm -hmm. they are my heart and soul. I get like emotional talking about them because they are everything to me and being away from them is, it breaks my heart. And Mm so, but I, it is like this job is something to where like you either love it or you don't Mm -hmm. like you have to, you have to dive in head first. And I, I said to myself, like, this is what I want, and I know I want it. And if I have to sacrifice the time with my family right now, which is killing me, like, I'm going to do it because it's what I love. Mm. So well, I just I, fully committed, and it's been it's been amazing. Like, it's been an amazing journey. I love that you shared that um, just about your family, too, and sometimes that why can be so much bigger. And I just want to point out um, what you're doing as I really got to know who you are and what you're about. And just the fact that you are, re- you are standing in your power as, as not only a female, but also I love, 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 um, you know, what you're doing as a plus size model as well, because I have to be honest, what I hear all the time from women, you know, I work with women who want to bust through fears and become whatever it is that they want to become. It's like, 
I hear a lot that they are waiting. They're waiting on their body or they're waiting to feel good enough. So what is something yeah. that you would tell somebody who's like, you know, when this happens, when I feel good or when I finally oh. overcome that fear, what would you say to them? Well, to be, to be completely honest, I, am, I have been that way myself. Mm-hmm. I've totally been that way. Like I've always been like, oh, when I lose 20 pounds or when I lose, you know, this or when I change my hair or something. But then I, I came to a, a conclusion and I heard it. It was, it was a quote that said, don't wait, wait on your weight. Mm. like stop waiting for something because it's like years can go by and you're going to wait and, and wait until when, when is that ever going to happen? When are you ever as women, when are we ever going to be satisfied with the way we look? Mm. You know, like that's something that's a constant struggle for women daily. You know, like I, I constantly am very, you know, I, I push the confidence and, and I am, I am very confident, confident person, but there are days where I look like, ah, oh, dang, you know, like, I don't really like the way this fits on me. And I don't really, you know, I wish I could lose that little bit of flab right there. It is a constant push. But I did tell myself one day, it's like, I need to stop waiting because right now is, tomorrow's not promised. And right now I'm as good as I'm going to get today. Mm -hmm. So I better make sure that I I do everything I want to do and that I can do. And Mm -hmm. the harm, and like I've always said, my mom is, my mom is the number one person. She's like, what's the harm in trying? Because all they can say is no. And we're, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll be in the same place you were before. There's nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. So that's always been my mentality about things. It's like, okay, well, I have nothing to lose. I'm not, all they can tell me is no. Mm -hmm. And then all I can do is just try again. And, you know, like it's never something to where I, there's never a complete, um, I guess it's never a definite. There's nothing really definite. You can always make sure that like, you work through something, you push through, and then you always have to you always have to take that chance because then, you know, you'll always be sitting in the background and what wishing and wanting mm-hmm. and not really getting what you want. Mm, I love that. So let's talk about that, the no's and the struggle and all of those things that we are so afraid of for some reason. It's like we dwell more on the no's and getting rejected than really thinking about what is on the other side. So what is something that you would share with people about the no's and the struggle that has made you better or stronger or why do we need them? Well, I mean, so being actually, um, I was a plus size model, so that actually helped me for, you know, the future. And it's something that, uh, so being a plus size model, like, yes, like everybody's like, Oh, you know, whatever being a model is just so easy. You just have to walk in front of the camera and blah, blah, blah. It's really not as easy as you think <laughs> you're on the grind and you're pushing through and you're going to all these, all these casting calls, you know, you're on your feet walking in cars and cabs and the, you're going and doing all this stuff to, uh, like 95% of the time people just saying, no, you're not good enough. No, you're not good enough. Sorry. You don't have to look for me. Sorry. Your forehead's too big. Your love handles are too wide. I don't like the freckles on your face. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. I've heard it all. Mm. Your hair's too curly. Your feet are too, like just from in, I like, I remember I, and I was only like 18 at the time and I would call my mom crying my eyes out, just bawling my eyes out. Mm. And my mom, my mom was just like, you know what? She's like, those people are going to, they're going to keep saying no to you until fi- one day you're going to find yes. And that's the one that's actually going to fit for you. That's going to be perfect for you because you have prepared yourself with all this, you know, with all the doors closing in your face and you're going to keep pushing through until finally you find the perfect fit. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, is that WWE is my perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Like I was told no so many times in the modeling industry. And yes, I got some great jobs here and there, but it never felt like home to me. Mm-hmm. And then finally WWE came like, it, it's like, yeah, I know I have family in the business, but it wasn't exactly my path right off the bat. My path was something I, I wanted to try uh, something else. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to get into the modeling industry. I wanted to do that. And then for some reason, it all led to me being right here in the WWE. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was all those no's that led me to where, like, I, I fit perfectly. And this is where I fit perfectly. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that's something I, sh- I always, like... Tr- I even tell like my friends and stuff, it's like, you will find your perfect fit. Like you can't just constantly like dwell on the nose. You take that. No, you put it in your back, you remember it. And then you just feel that fire to keep going Mm -hmm. and you'll find your perfect fit. Oh, I love that you shared that because I truly believe that is the path to, you know, our purpose in life. Um, I'm so grateful for all the no's. Like, can you imagine if all of your yeses would have happened where you'd be right now? Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Like, it, that's how I always think. I'm like, there's no, I have no growth in myself if I'm constantly being coddled and yes mm-hmm. and whatever, whatever. There's no growth in who I am. And I like, I even thought like, gosh, what if I would have been in the WWE when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, I mm-hmm. would have not succeeded. I could have not have done it. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Definitely not. Like totally. I'm a, right. I'm a totally different person now than I was then and because of all the no's and the doors shut and all, you know, the stifled uh, projects I've done. Like it's just, it's, they were all for a reason and all for a purpose. And, you know, I didn't give up. I didn't stop because why would you know, mm. I eventually found my path. I eventually found my yes. Mm, yeah. Then they just evolve you into the powerful woman that you are today. And so I'm sure you're so grateful, like just for all of those experiences and opportunities. So what's something right now that comes to mind that you're so incredibly grateful for? Uh, well, I know it sounds like cliche. First and foremost, I'm always grateful for my health, mm-hmm. just especially like in this business, I'm grateful for my health. But I am grateful for the platform I have with the WWE. Mm-hmm. You know, like the fact that, you know, I did go through all the no's and being a plus size woman and, and just, I appreciate every woman's shape and size regardless, you know, like height, uh, shape. I know everybody's like, oh my God, you're just all the plus size women. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm about every woman, mm-hmm. every single woman. And the platform I get here in the WWE that I'm insanely grateful for, you know, like this is my family here and they give me the opportunity to go out and like project like the positivity and like happiness on people. That's what I'm, that's like something I'm very grateful as of right now. Mm, I love that. And, you know, I want to talk about that because I, I believe that women have so many different ways of using platforms, but they need to get maybe even a bit more creative with it. So why do you think it's so important for no matter what women are doing and especially how you're doing it? I mean, you're, you are, you know, using your platform, WWE, as women's empowerment as well. Like you're using it in so many different ways. So why is it important for women right now to use their voices and their platforms? Well, this, okay, so in, in sports right now in the WWE, we, like, as a whole, the WWE is pushing women's empowerment big time just because, like, I feel like as of right now in all of history, we have such a huge push as women. Like, you see women just killing it. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Ronda Rousey, like, who completely sold out pay-per-views all over the world. Like, she main evented that. Mm-hmm. Like, a woman took over a male-dominated industry and just completely, like, killed it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the women's U.S. soccer team t- constantly, like, on top and, like, taking over. So women need to know, like, they need to use their voice to not, like, settle for anything less than what they deserve. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I mean, it's something my mom's instilled in me since I was a, a young girl. Like, I think that's why I'm so, like, I get so much to talk about my mom, sorry. I get, I'm it. so like, <laughs> I'm so dri- I know, like every time I say my mom, I just get choked up. I'm so <laughs> driven to push for women because like seeing my mom, she was, you know, she immigrated from Germany when she was 16 years old. She was all by herself. Mm. Like the world turned their back on her. She just, she, oh, like, oh, mm. my mom's sorry. Insane. But she, you know, she continues to push through and like she raised three children and she never, like she worked her ass off. Sorry her butt off. Mm -hmm. She constantly, she had like four different jobs and never asked for help. And like seeing her do that. And the fact that all three of her kids are successful, healthy human beings. And like, it just, that gives me so much hope. Like I owe her that much. I owe every woman. Oh my God, stop. I owe every woman who's pushed through the single moms, you know what I mean? The women who already had the world turn their back on them, who treat them like shit Mm -hmm. for them to push through and know that they have a voice. Like, they are somebody and they should, they should never settle for anything less than what they deserve. Mm. Sorry. Oh my God. I'm like a hot mess. Never apologize. We, we love <laughs> cheers here. It's terrifying, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, but like, oh my God, I'm so proud. Like when it comes to my mom, it was like, you know, oh, mm. she's so amazing. I love that you share that because I think sometimes we get so caught up in our fears and our struggles and our obstacles and we forget that we are using our voices and we are fighting not only for our mothers and our grandmothers and the people who did not have voices before us, but we have the opportunity as females to truly change the course of history. I mean, our daughters are watching. All of these young girls are watching you guys. I mean, you have a doll after you. You, yeah, an action yeah, figure, yeah. right? Like, how yeah. epically amazing is that? Like, how powerful, girl? 
Girl, you don't even know when I saw that. I I just like I dropped my phone. I literally <laughs> dropped my phone on the floor and I lost my shit. Like I couldn't even. The fact that like there's an action figure and it was so anatomically correct. You know they wow. didn't they didn't shave down the sides to make it look like all the other dolls. They like they kept those big curvy boobs and that big curvy butt in there. Yes. You know, like Love they kept it. all that makes me me mm-hmm. in that action figure. Like. I mean, that is just, that's huge. Like, little girls, and I'm not saying, little girls, I grew up being a bigger girl. You know, I grew up being just a thicker girl, like, tall and thick. And no, no younger girl is going to be able to, to feel that now. Like, I never saw a doll my size. You know, Barbie mm-hmm. dolls were, I love playing with them, but I was just like, oh, you know, I'll never look like that. But now a little girl can grow up and see a doll that is, you know, a little curvier, curly mm-hmm. hair, dark skin, you know, like, and be like, oh, my gosh, that looks just like me. Mm-hmm. Or that looks just my mom. Or that looks just like my sister. Like, you know, that that was, I mean, that's huge. And, you know, that, I mean, gosh, my niece, even my little niece, who's, she's the sweetest heart and she's so beautiful. And like, she's going to grow up to be a tall girl. She's already like the 99th percentile for her age. She's already tiring over everybody. She's going to be a tall, big girl. And like, I hope she can like look back and look, oh, look what my aunt did. Like, look, mm-hmm. the, you know, the, the world that she can, you know, grow up in. And it could be something that's completely accepting of yes. all differences, yes. you know, especially for women, because women, we need that. Mm. And we need other women supporting each other during that. Oh, my God. We're so grateful for you. So what is something <laughs> that if you had a billboard, this was it, the end of your life, you have a billboard, you could only write one message on there, what would it say? Oh, my gosh. That's kind of a, that's a lot of pressure. I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, and it, this is, I know it's so cliche and it's something that's close to my heart, but I'm always all about spreading love. Mm. And like, mm-hmm. it's, it's something that I've constantly said. Like, there's this one thing that, um, you know, uh, people are going to, um, what is it? People are going to love you and hate you for who you are. So always go, always go towards the love. Mm. It always wins, right? No matter what. It's like sometimes love, yeah, it's just no so what. hard to choose it. But in the end, I swear, yeah. I mean, no matter what in my life, it's always won. That is so, so beautiful. So I would love to know, what is a question that you wish more people knew about you or that people would ask you? What is something that you wish more people knew about you? Um, I wish more people knew about me. Well, so it's different because I'm on the WWE platform and uh, and people see me as a character like Nia Jax is this big, strong, mean character that mm-hmm. bullies all the girls around, you know? And then I do actually have another amazing platform through the WWE is Total Divas. Mm-hmm. And so they're actually going to see some a different side of me, which which you said, like the goosey, like funny side. Um, I guess, I mean, a question that I wish people would ask me is... Uh, like, like, what, what is my why? Mm. Like, exactly what you said earlier to me. Like, what is my why? Like, what does drive me to do what I do every single day? Mm-hmm. You know, and and it's something that I feel like anybody can relate to, and it's it's my family, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I wish people would know a little bit more because it is hard. It is different, like in this uh, in this character. But I'm like a big meanie, and you know, little kids see you, and they're just kind of like, "Oh my gosh, she's so mean!" And she beats up all of my favorite people. And I'm like, "No, I'm actually, no." I, I, you know, I, I, I beat up all the little girls, and like, you know, oh, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, you you wish the people would, you know, what is your drive? Like, what is that? What drives Nia Jackson? That's, you know, it's family, it's love, it's you know, positivity, it's support. You know, I love empowering women, and I love the fact that I get like especially like on Total Divas, you'll get to see, um, I, I really do try to empower women through showing that we can all do it. Like no matter what, you know, there's, you should never hold yourself back because you think that you don't look a certain part or they only want a certain person. Like you should always make them change their mind, mm-hmm. you know, just because you don't think you fit it, go and tell them that they need you because you are the perfect fit for what they want. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I love that you guys are getting a, so much more screen time. So what changed? Why did that happen? Was yeah. there a demand for it? How did that work? Oh, yes, there was, girl. You know social media is strong up in this era. <laughs> yes. uh, so we had um, 
there was a hashtag give divas a chance. Mm. It was trending for three days on Twitter and it was just, it was a huge social media like outbreak. Like everybody's just going nuts because, um, you know, there was a time where the women weren't given as long of TV time as the men, you know, and we didn't get to showcase our athleticism and our talent. Mm-hmm. And so the, the fans were the ones who really pushed for it, who really wanted it. And so, you know, uh, the WWE universe, they really made it happen. And ever since then, like, it's just been, you know, the women have been at the forefront, you know, we're in there. We have Charlotte and Sasha who have been evented numerous times. I've been, I've been evented raw a couple of times. You know, we've had women in cage matches, ladder matches, like never before. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, I mean, I get to be a part of that, which is an insane thing to think of. You know, I get to, cha- I get to be a part of this women's empowerment that we have. Mm. And uh, it's, it's amazing. Mm. That is amazing. I love that. So what is something that, let's go back to, you know, when you were um, really pursuing this dream and this career, what is something that you would possibly, if you would go back and say to yourself, maybe something that you would go back and coach yourself around? Oh girl, uh, this is something that like, uh, it's, it's something that I'm always like preaching, but you know, sometimes you preach stuff and you're like, Oh yeah, I should tell it to myself. Yeah. I should have gone <laughs> back time. and said, yeah, I should have got, yeah, I should have gone back and told myself to never change a thing about myself. You know, like I, I just constantly, and, and it was, a, it, like I said, being so different, like it was a struggle. Like I looked at some of the girls like that I was working with next to, and I was like, Oh, I, you know, look at her long straight hair or look at that and look at this. And then I constantly try to try to fit in and do those things and change myself. And now I look back and I'm thinking, gosh, I wish I would have just kept exactly who I was because I was perfect the way I was, you know, like, and that's, they, they hired me and wanted me for who I was and what I was in all, in all of my glory. And I wish I would have gone back and, and told myself that. Oh, I love, I mean, I love that advice. I literally feel the, feel the exact same way because it's so crazy how if we are not ourselves, we don't actually attract and get those beautiful blessings that are meant for us. It's until we fully yeah. like live into who we are with everything that we think is not right with us, which is exactly what makes us so right. So what's something about you that now you've learned to just love and embrace about yourself that before you wished was different? Uh, my hair. I, it's <laughs> I love so, that. Like, such a, it's such a small thing, but like uh-huh. I used to have like, oh my gosh, growing up, my hair is so thick and curly. Mm. And I grew up in a town where I grew up at a beach town, Carlsbad's all beachy. And it was like blonde, beautiful girls, like tan blonde, beautiful girls running around with this straight, gorgeous hair. And I would beg my mom to straighten my hair. I would beg her to, to take me to get it straight. And I would beg her to get it thin. And she kept telling me, no, your hair is beautiful. Your hair is beautiful the way it is. And I'd be like, mom, no, I love it. Like, I, I love their hair. I mean, I, it just nonstop. And then now, like, I think back, I'm like, oh, my gosh, my hair is beautiful. Like, why am I, I constantly trying to change myself? Like, why couldn't I just, you know, mm-hmm. listen and, and realize, like, you know, that's, that's something that, it's me. It's who I am. It makes me me. Mm-hmm. You know? And no, it's, I mean, it's all the differences. Yeah. It's, and hair is a big thing. <laughs> it is. It, it's I, just I, girls, like hair is a yeah. huge thing, right? Yeah. Especially in the wrestling world too. I used to always like look at their hair when I was younger. I was like, oh my God, their hair. And now, I'm, now I feel you. It's like just embracing everything. It's so beautiful. So yeah. what is something for you? Um, I know as females in order to, you know, I feel like be able to really take the time for ourselves that we need to recharge, especially you, probably any time that you get for yourself is priceless. What are some boundaries that you have to set in order to maintain a somewhat healthy um, lifestyle and mindset? Um, some boundaries for like, I, I guess just I things like, you I have to say have no to, to. With, oh, uh, with work. Yeah, with work or with friendships. I find a lot of women struggle with work, friendships, family. Like, are there certain things that you have to say no to in order to oh, just have some yeah. peace of mind and quiet time? There's a lot of things. Like, it's unfortunate <laughs> because um, I do have really good, I have amazing friends and amazing family. And there are times where I, you know, uh, there are times where I only get, you know, two, three days mm-hmm. off. 
after being on the road for two months straight and, wow. you know, not being able, yeah, not being in my bed. And, and there's times where I literally just have to turn my phone off or tell my mom, no, I can't fly home. I have to stay here in my own bed. And, you know, like, uh, there, I actually have a couple of friends who have gotten really upset with me because they will see me on social media being all over, you know, the world and doing this and doing that. And, you know, they're like, well, how come you're not hanging out over here? And how come you're not doing this? And I said, I, I, you know, I'm busy and it, this, what you see on social media is it's 99% my job Mm -hmm. and I, I can't just, you know, get up and go. And I need that. I need that peace of mind where I can go home, do a little bit of meditation, get some sleep, you know, go work out my own gym, play with my dog. I, I need that to be able to, to keep my sanity, you know, to, mm-hmm. to know that like I can go on another three months on the road without being in my own bed. You know, it's just something that you have to sacrifice. And, and my good friends understand that. And, some, and you know, other friends, other people have come to learn. But it's just something that, you know, that's what I need to do for me. And it's just, it's difficult, but... I think that's really important for people to hear, though, because I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what career or dream you're pursuing. There are massive sacrifices. And I do believe the people who are going to support you in the long run are going to stay and they're going to understand and they're going to be that beautiful, you know, place that you can recharge. And sometimes we have to let those other people go. Right. So what is something I know it's not easy, but how do you let how do you let them go? What do you think of? Like, how do you stay in, um, in that mindset, even though it's challenging and sometimes you feel like you're, I mean, I've felt like I'm not a good person, you know, how do you reset that? Oh, a thousand percent. So, I mean, my mom's like, almost, like told me this growing up, I've been, I've never really taken anything for me. Like I've always like sacrificed, like I would want to do something, but then my friend would want to do it. And I always do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And it was always like, my mom's like, you've been like that your whole life. Like we're no matter what, you're always giving to somebody else before you ever take anything. And so at, finally, when it happened between, um, it happened uh, between a friend that was just like, I, I really like, I'm not, I need to do something for myself. Like I need my sanity. I need my center because mm-hmm. what I do isn't easy. You know, it's not something that like everybody can do. And in life in general, it gets crazy and you need to be able to come back to your center and you need to be able, I need to be able to feel like if I do need the time away that I'm going to have a friend there to lean on when I need them. Mm-hmm. So it kind of was just something where I was like, I'm sorry, but if you can't really help me and, and meet me in, in the middle, mm-hmm. then maybe you, maybe you weren't as good a friend as I thought you were, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. something, things like that happen. And, and like in life, I find it's something as you get older, you see people like you grow up and you grow apart. You know, you're different. Like we, we're constantly changing as human beings. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. thankfully that person is still in my life and, you know, I mean, felt I felt my way, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just stuff that, you know, things like, uh, like stuff like that happens, especially here because, you know, like uh, before I was, you know, accessible and around people all the time and I'm able to talk and pick up my phone whenever they call. But now it's like, I might be on a plane for 14 hours. I might be on a show. I might be, you know, filming things. Like I can't always be accessible anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And allowing that, right? Like finding that place where you're like, okay, yeah. I'm releasing this guilt or I'm, I'm releasing this feeling and knowing that what you're doing yeah. is actually impacting so many people. Sometimes we have to let a couple of people go to know that our life's mission is maybe to impact even more women, you know? Yeah. And, and when you're not, and at the end of the day, I've been told myself, I was like, if I'm not being good to myself, I'm not even going to be a good friend to them. Totally. So like, you know, mm-hmm. like being, I have to like, make sure that like, I'm right with me before anybody can, like, I'm not gonna be beneficial to anybody mm-hmm. if I'm not right. Naya, I'm so grateful for you. I just want to take a minute to acknowledge <laughs> you before we wrap, because I just, Number one, you I feel like I've known you forever. You just have that energy and presence about you. Um, number two. Oh, thank I'm, you too, Lori. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, number two, I, I love what you're doing. I just think that you have such a powerful presence. And I think your message is going to just expand even more with people. And I think that you are an amazing role model and example. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. And I want to make sure so that for having me. everyone can 
find you, follow you. So where can we find you on television? Where can we find you on social media? Tell me what's exciting right now. So um, Monday Night Raw is every Monday night on the USA Network at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then I'm on Total Divas Wednesday night on the E! Network at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern as well. So, and then Twitter and and Instagram, I am Nia Jax WWE. So you can find me there. Amazing. I'm everywhere. <laughs> I love it. I That's how it should be. And you guys, I will link that all up in the show notes. And one last question. I always end on a really, you are on a really brief elevator ride. Okay. It's only like two or three f- floors. It's like 30 seconds long. And someone looks over at you, just a random stranger and asks you, how can I make myself happy? What do you say? How can I make myself happy? Uh, okay, I'm going to go back to it. I give, Giving love and spreading happiness has always made me happier mm. than I've ever, like, been doing anything for myself. Giving love and, like, doing what I can for others mm. always makes somebody happy. Mm. I've always found that. Amen. Thank you so much, Naya. Naya. And you guys, if you loved this episode as much as I did, make sure you share it with your friends. And until next time, earn your happy. Bye, everyone. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me on the Earn Your Happy podcast. I am so glad that you stopped by. If you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would love it, that would be absolutely amazing and we would be forever grateful. Also, please leave us a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving us an honest thought, an honest comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear more of. It would really help us out on our journey to helping thousands and thousands of people. Until then, don't forget to earn your happy. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. And I want to make sure that you have my phone number and I'm not kidding. Did you know that I have a community text number for real? My phone number is 310-496-8363. This goes directly to my phone. All you have to do is text the word daily to 310-496-8363. And I literally text you every single day, Monday through Friday. I actually just got done 30 seconds ago texting a bunch of people back. And I talk to you all of the time. You guys, people always ask me how I got my community text number and how it works. Well, all you have to do is you can just go to community.com and get your own. Community makes it easy to get a phone number that you can use to build your audience using text. People just text you at your number and they're added to your group. Then you can text them out audios, video links, anything you want. You guys, I text out happy birthday videos. I love to send podcast links, thoughts about life, book recommendations, uh, different events that I'm doing in the local area. Texting gets me out of the noise of social media and directly into your hand. And now you can start texting your people too. Just go to community.com to get your phone number. They give you a 10 digit real phone number, not those weird short codes that look like spam, but it's more than a phone number. Your new number comes with an inbox for SMS and texting. This means you can actually manage your text list from your computer and an app on your phone. You can schedule texts to send at certain times and to certain groups. You can even set up auto replies or let your assistant or customer service team answer your text messages via community's awesome dashboard. Just go to community.com and ask for a free demo. They'll show you how it works and get you your number. It's time to start texting your audience versus just posting on social media. Everyone uses community for that. So go check them out at community.com. I can tell you it's not just great for communicating with my audience, but Chris and I use community and our texts to also sell out our launches. I'm telling you, you get such an incredible response because you really are creating a true deep sense of community and it's so intimate. It's freaking amazing. Go check it out at community.com. Thank you. 
Hey y'all, I'm so excited to share with you, Earn Your Happy is now part of Growth Day Podcast Network. A bunch of us are coming together to bring more growth to the world and support shows and brands that we truly believe in. And one of my friends is also on the network and I'd love for you to go subscribe to his show. You guys, Trent Shelton has the most incredible podcast. It's called Straight Up with Trent Shelton. And it's going to remind you that you are built for this. I have heard Trent speak in person multiple times. I've listened to his podcast a ton. He's coming on the show and I literally cannot wait because this man just spits straight fire. It is like truth that goes to your core and makes you take action right away. If you want one of those podcasts that when you're just out on a walk, you can't help but want to start running and run through a wall in your life, this is the show to go listen to. So you guys make sure that you go subscribe to the show straight up with Trent Shelton. You're going to love it. Want to know a huge secret to my success? Okay, not only my success, but just about every single person that I have interviewed on this podcast who is successful has this in common. You guys, they love to journal. They capture their life lessons and what they're grateful for. But a lot of people don't keep this up consistently. And most people do know that the research shows that journaling deepens your gratitude and increases self-awareness. But did you also know that journaling decreases stress and helps you achieve your goals faster? In fact, journaling is a huge differentiator between average performers at work and high performing people. It leads to longer term clarity, confidence, and success. So why don't more people journal? Why didn't I journal consistently? Honestly, they don't like staring at a blank page. It's hard to carry a book around with you or a notepad, and they just don't even know what to write about or they just forget. That's why I know that you're going to love Growth Day. It's the world's number one system for self-improvement and it's like all-in-one personal development in an app. And it has an awesome digital journal and people love it. Growth Day's digital journal has hundreds of research-backed writing prompts for self-reflection, positive mindset, confidence building, and success. I use them all the time and it makes me think in ways that I typically don't and it makes me ask myself better questions, which we all know gets better results in our life. It even has prompts that help you develop a daily, weekly, or monthly habit of reflecting on your life and identifying areas to grow. So it's a perfect time of year to start journaling, you guys. When you sign up at Growth Day, you also get systems for habit tracking, goal setting, and scoring and improving every area of your life. Best of all, I get to teach there too, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope that I get to see you. I teach live in Growth Day every single month with a new topic just for you. So join me there. Start your free trial at growthdate.com slash Lori.